Good morning and welcome to my morning rant. I want to take you guys to Matthew 14, verse 30. And we're going to pull out a couple of principles out of there um, to show you um, a beautiful aspect in the Bible. There are two of them that we're going to just talk about out of this story. And you guys have heard me talk about this story many, many times. I pull it because I think it's one of the most powerful stories out there. And this is about Peter walking on the water to Jesus Christ. And we know that this man, uh, Jesus was a far off and so they saw this figure and they were terrified because they thought it was a ghost and uh, all of the other things that they said in the word and peter comes up and he says lord if that's you um, invite me to come out to meet you out there and jesus said to him come so then when jesus said come that means that um, jesus uh, offered his invitation and it's now his um, his uh, desire his will his decision to come out and he stepped out by faith he began his journey if you will by faith and i believe that um that jesus may have stayed there maybe uh to um, to see what was going to happen but this is just conjecture but i think jesus wanted to show them all um that uh, through faith they all things are possible and uh, peter began to walk and uh um you know towards Jesus. One of the funny things about this story, it never mentions anything that was going on with the others that were in the boat, the other disciples were, that were there. It didn't tell us how they responded, what was going on with them. But I'm sure there's a part of amazement that they were looking at uh, Peter, someone they knew that they grew up with, that was performing just like Jesus, and he was walking on water with his faith. And uh, as the story tells us, that a couple of things began to change around them. And uh, as things began to change around them, we then get a different um, vantage point as to what started to happen to Peter. So Peter began to walk towards Jesus Christ, and it tells us in, in, in Matthew uh, 14.30, it reads in one translation, but when he saw the strong winds and the way he was terrified and began to sink. So that's one translation and it tells us that the other was but when he saw the wind he was afraid and beginning to sink cried out Lord save me. So I want to entitle this morning rant today um, and beginning to sink. Beginning to sink he cried out Lord save me. And so you and I have started our journey and somewhere along that journey we took our eyes off of the word the promise of God and God uh, uh, was still there. Jesus was still there and he did not move. I actually believe that Jesus was just waiting for him because he told him to come. He says if that is you bid me to come to you. So Jesus says, come to me, you know, so um, it could be that Jesus was just standing there waiting for him to show up. And he began his journey, as you and I do, and in the midst of that, something happened. So let's take a look at this translation. It says, but when he saw the strong wind and the wave, so at some point, he be, he switched his um, he switched something. Regardless, the winds were happening around him, but he wasn't focused on the winds at that time. But suddenly, the winds began to change, and he began to change his focus. So it says that he saw. So that means he must have taken his eyes off of Jesus and began to look around him when he saw his surroundings. He began to sink, it tells us. He began, he was terrified and he began to sink. Another translation says, But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried out. So, you and I, again, as we are walking through faith, that I did a study uh, a while ago, several of them, about the enemies of our faith. One of the enemies of our faith is uh, fear, and fear will cause you and I to get out or change focus, if you will. And when we change focus, the Bible tells us that we begin to sink. And so I wanted to take you guys to a couple of scriptures um, and bring you some other pictures as to what to do when you're sinking. And we see Peter did one of the very first things. What did he do? He cried out. So that is basically a state of prayer or desperation. That's a type of prayer. Uh, that's a desperate prayer that you see that right there, cry out, ah, Lord save me, that's what he said. And the Bible tells us that immediately Jesus Christ uh, took his hand. So here we are talking about this situation. Let's take a look at it as a process of what's happening. So you and I start our journey, and all things are good. 
we are praising God, and um, usually when things are not uh, there on our timeline, we begin to let our uh, begin to begin to get a little frustrated. We begin to look around us and notice that it's not happening in the timeline that we want, and then we begin to exit faith, if you will. Um, but the process that you and I have to obtain within the walk of faith, especially when we're beginning to sink, is to cry out, is to pray. First Samuel. Uh, 7 9 says Samuel took a suckling lamb and offered it for a whole burnt offering to the Lord and Samuel cried to the Lord for Israel and the Lord answered him and so we see that the uh, the posture that you and I have to obtain within that sinking time is to pray and as we pray God promises and he said that he will deliver us out of that situation so we see then that uh, uh, Samuel prayed we see that uh, Peter uh, prayed the form of as I mentioned to you cry out if you look in the word and you'll see that the children of Israel all um, uh, riddled through the, the Old Testament about the children of Israel crying out to God and the, uh, their cry reached to the heavens and God responded as a result of their cry. And so you and I have to cry before the Lord. I've told you guys, uh, we get a little distracted um, in our walk with God. I spoke to you a little while ago, a couple of podcasts ago with Martha. And Jesus said to Martha, you are distracted. You are distracted from spending time with the word as her sister was focused on the word listening to what he had to say. And Martha, he says, you are distracted. You're upset. And so she had was in a totally different mindset, if you will. So we see that Peter is moved from faith into sinking, and he is then crying to God as a result, and God came to his aid. If you look at the book of Psalms, you will see lots of um, truth about this principle because we know David, he did a lot of crying out to God. Psalms 18.6 says, In my distress, I call upon the Lord. To my God, I cried for help. From his temple he heard my voice, and my cry to him reached his ears. So you and I, that pastor of praying, and uh, when we are crying to God, if you go through and see the situations when someone is in, you're in a state of desperation, you're out of fate in a way, and uh, as a result of you being in that fearful state, that space of desperation, because he, he the psalmist does say it in Psalms 34, 6, in my desperation, I prayed, and the Lord listened. He saved me from all of my troubles. We know that Paul also decreed God saved him from all of his troubles. So I want to remind you guys, and we talked about it earlier in a past uh, podcast, a couple of weeks, I believe, we talked about praying. And I actually did a uh, podcast previously about the different types of prayer and the purpose of prayer and how it comes into play in our lives as Christians. Again, this is just a way of communicating with God. And um, through our desperation, we pray and we cry unto God. And that's okay. God is still there. And it tells us that through all of that, He hears us and that He will save us from all of our troubles. Um, as I mentioned to you, the um, book of Psalms is absolutely full of scriptures about um, the individual crying out to God and God hearing and delivering from all of our, our problems. So Peter, he cried, and look what happens in the timeline by which God comes into that place when he began to cry. It tells us that Jesus immediately attended to his cry. And so many of us, as I said, even though we start in faith, uh, when we do feel that sinking feeling, if you will, and you know it, you begin to allow the spirit of fear to come in. We see in Psalms 30, Four, six tells us that the spirit of depression also accompanies that spirit that can come into our lives as a as a beginning to come out of faith. I talked to you guys um, about all the different types of enemies of our faith. Abraham was doubt. He says he doubt not and so forth. And we know that another is unbelief. So all of these different enemies that are coming in. But the posture by which you and I have to behave and, and find ourselves when we are sinking. And again, we know when we are. We cry unto God and he will come 
Psalms 107, 19. Then they cried to the Lord, the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them from all their distress. So you and I will have it. Uh, we will have those times where we are drowning, where we are beginning to sink. And um, as you feel you're beginning to sink, God is still faithful to you and I. Psalms 34, 17, the righteous cry out and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all of their troubles. Psalms 107, 6, then they cried out to the Lord in trouble and he delivered them from their distress. We know um, I read previously, previously once, uh, 107, 19. We have Psalms 18, verses 6. In my distress, I call to the Lord. I cry to the Lord for help. For this temple, he heard from his temple, he heard my voice. My cry came before him into his ears. So we know that he's attentive to us as we begin to um, sink and we begin to cry. That God is coming to our aid. Psalms 31. 22. In my alarm, I said, I am cut off from your sight, yet you heard my cry for mercy when I called to you for help. And the Bible does tell us, it says, come boldly before the throne of grace, whereby you may obtain mercy and find grace to help in your time of need. So you and I, when we are in that state of beginning to sink, we are still, God is still able to come and save us and rescue us from all of our troubles. Psalms 145, 19, he will fulfill the desires of them that hear him. He will also hear their cry and will save them. Psalms 10, 17, Lord, you know the hopes of the helpless. Surely you will hear their cry and comfort them. Uh, Psalms 34, 15. Again, I told you the Psalms, and I wanted to read a few of them, the scriptures that are dealing with crying on to you, to see the principle there, that we, when we get into that space of beginning to sing and cry out, God is faithful. The eyes of the Lord watches over those who do right. His ears are open to their cries for help. So, it's not over, guys. All is not lost. Um, don't be hopeless. Um, recognize that uh, you are sinking, and there's nothing wrong with that. God is a merciful God, and um, we will learn from our experience, hopefully. And so that next time when we are in that space, we will recognize the signposts, if you will, and we will remember that, no, wait a minute, I did this once before, and um, I don't need to do that because I know that all things work together for good to those who love the Lord, who love the Lord and that are called according to his purposes. And so you continue to do your work. And I always say to people, it is difficult in in our human behavior, in how we, that is why we are called disciples. We are called to discipline ourselves. And when we, we, we are called to discipline ourselves, because I know we have our jobs, we have our school, we have all these other things that are happening around you and I um, that uh, will keep you distracted like it did with Sarah. There was so much to do. She, she came to him and said, Lord, I, you know, I have so much to do and uh, can you talk to Mary and have her come over and help me? And he says, wait a minute, you are in a bad place. And so I want to encourage you guys that don't worry that uh, even when you are beginning to sink and those that are think that they're way under the water. The Bible tells us that God still saves you. He said, you are not, you may think you're under the water, but in Isaiah said, God promises that it will never overflow uh, you. So you may think you are, but you're not and that he is there with you in the midst of your sinking, if you will. But just remember to keep crying out to him, uh, because the children of Israel cried out to him, and the Bible tells us that their cries reached to heaven, and God responded. So uh, don't allow nothing to make you give up. Uh, make sure that the enemy, don't give him the pleasure of seeing you, as they say, don't let them see you sweat. Don't give him the pleasure of seeing you surrendering and walking away from God because God is not like that. He is faithful and he is working all things for your benefit. It may not seem so because of whatever timeline and the pressure that you're under, but there's a secret ingredient for us when we operate within the pressure, the timeline. God created it, guys. And he said, let there be light. He created the matter and created time at that point in time. Before that, there was no such thing as time because 
time was not uh, there. God, it was eternity, uh, past eternity, and God was there. And he called time into existence. And once he did that, then you and I are governed by it. And he is also, because the Bible tells us, in the fullness of time, God does stuff. And so you and I have to recognize that the ingredients that created time was faith. And when you are in faith, you have the power to um, speed up that time. And that is called a miracle. When we speed up the answer of something, it is a miracle. It is um, uh, moving the timeline, if you will, faster than usual. So I just wanted to encourage you guys, man, that don't give up. It's okay. I know you feel like you're beginning to sink, but um, if you read the Bible, and I read you a bunch of scriptures, it'll show you that you're not alone. People were crying all the time, and yet it says that Jesus Christ was so attentive to him that immediately he reached down and saved him. And so God will save you. And all you have to do is cry out. Stay in that state of prayer. And I promise you that God will deliver you out of all and from every single problem that you're going through as you are walking on this planet until he comes. And I want to encourage my brothers and sisters that Jesus Christ is Lord and God sits on the throne. He is your Father. He is your Adonai. He is your provider. He is your friend. He is you. He's there for you. He is uh, here. The Holy Spirit is here. If you talk to him, get into a relationship with the Holy Spirit, he will show you all truth. He will reveal things to you about Jesus. He will reveal things to you about uh, God the Father. He will reveal things about you. Because once the Spirit of Revelation rests on us, he will show us mighty things. And so I want to encourage you guys, even though you feel as if you're beginning to sing, Cry unto God, and you will be saved. The Bible says, the just shall live by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight.